Okay, it's been a while since I've done a chart focus, so I thought I'd do a quick one tonight. Fresh and um, motivated after the Brisbane meet, organised by Rob. Um, I'm going to do something a little bit different tonight as well. I'm going to have a look at a few charts from Friday afternoon. Um, any of you who were watching close, you would have noticed some fairly volatile um, match-ups on several stocks, some to the downside and some to the up. And I'm just going to flick through a few of these on Spark just to... Um, see whether there's any trading opportunities in them on Monday. Uh, what I've got here, this is Spark, this is a list of intraday highs, so stuff that's close at its intra highs, sorted by percent gain, this is intra lows. And we're just going to flick through a few. I've got a one minute chart here, but we'll have a look at a bit a daily as well, I think. But So we'll have a look at some of the intra lows. One of the ones I first noticed was um, RHC. Any little feature of Spark here, if you, if you uh, hover the mouse over the code to get a little depth window, but that's not what we're looking at right now. I'm going to drag it down here in the one minute chart. Looks like it's in a fairly tight range all day, but that's only because it was at 17.20, matched at $16.50. And I wish I'd seen that on match because I would have been throwing everything at that on match out because it looks like a fairly decent anomaly. Um, it will probably gap up on Monday, but if it doesn't, I'll be watching this one for a bit of a scalp out of it. It certainly sh should have. Uh, I hoped I would have picked that one up. Uh, unfortunately, there was too much going on on close and didn't see that one. Um, what else we got here? There's a few really big ones. In fact, before we do that, we might go to the daily chart and have a look at RHC. I oh, don't want to do that. Put it down here. There's the daily chart. Try and get a black background on that. That's better. And you can see it's made a very ugly candle, but it's that one one tick on match out that's caused it so I mean the one anomaly on match out that's caused it so to the daily chart readers it looks like a horrible chart that closed on its lows we go back to a 15 minute chart or a one minute and as you can see it was really that just that last little bar that caused it so that's one definitely to watch another one's PTM very similar there's a one minute was it 466 467 something like that closed at 445 so another I'll be watching. Uh, we can have a look at the daily there. And as you can see, again, makes a pretty ugly candle up there at 467 or wherever it was. Not too bad. Uh, it certainly didn't hold its gains and still in this downtrend, but not so bad. Uh, Riv was yet another one. It's a takeover play, Riv. Daily candle doesn't look too out of line. We go to the intraday. Was around 1585, close at 1570s. Probably not quite as big as the others but still worth watching on Monday. Um, I haven't really had a look at too many of these others, but I'll see if I can flick through a couple and see if they're worthwhile. AJL, 205, close at 199, and I think if you have a look at, say, an hourly, pretty strong uh, support around there, so may well bounce off there. Uh, what else have we got? SMX. Nothing much there by the look. I'll look for some of these big ones. FBU. Gap down only a couple of cents that one, so it's probably not so big. UXC was basically testing intraday highs, dumped two and a half cents, which for that's a fair bit. So that's probably another one that's worth watching because it looked like it was bouncing quite well. Just going to make a note of that one, UXC. So uh, this is a really good example where daily candles can be pretty misleading if, if there's been an anomaly like this, and I assume it's from the index rebalancing. Uh, the ASX S&P index rebalancing at the end of um, Friday's close that's caused a fair bit of this but maybe the, the rebalancing has then brought in other buyers or sellers and that's added to the to the downside who knows web may be another one let's have a look at that no, that's not too bad it's really a case of going through these one by one and just seeing if you can find anything that's too out of the ordinary they look like the main ones to the downside the upside, I've already had a look at a few of these little ones that were nothing much, so I'm going to skip them. PRA, that's a pretty strong intraday chart, so I might have a look at that just on the daily. Oh, look at that. It's already run from 40 cents to 65 in three or four days, so the chart looks great. I'll probably set an alert up here at 70 just in case it kicks on, but I find it very hard to chase those. But back to the hunt and what we were looking for. DYL. It's gapped up a cent, it's probably not an awful lot, but, um, and you probably can't short it anyway. Again, 
not a bad looking daily chart obviously the uranium stock that got dumped like the rest of them um, ARU I know was one because I'm in ARU great looking daily candle we go and have a look at the intraday was still creeping up but gapped up five and a half cents I think it was from memory um, I'm pretty sure it was at 106 and a half or 107 on that last candle 107 and a half closed at 112 and a half so pretty handy five cent gap now whether that will give some of that back on Monday or not before it decides which direction it will go who knows um, I'll just sort these by change rather than present change and see if that helps pull some up. SFR was another one, I believe. Again, it's, it's been in a fairly steady uptrend all day, but it was at 660, 661 before match out. Matched at 677, 678, something like that. So I'm not sure if that's short or not, but it may try and fill this gap back in the morning before it, it uh, takes off. Um, let's see, I think there was one more that stood out yeah PMV uh, look at this one 597 something like that closed at 627 now I haven't checked if PMV is shortable but if we have a look at the daily put the daily down here makes a pretty impressive daily chart but when in fact it wasn't really nearly that high until that match out so these things may still just kick on based on that daily candle, but um, it's really worth keeping an eye on stuff like that and delving deeper sometimes to see if some of these anomalies present trading opportunities. So that's all I've got tonight. I just thought I'd run through that just for something different. Um, good luck tomorrow. Thanks.